So in my last video, we lowered this car on H&R Sport Springs. And while I've been going through the suspension lowering it, I've been trying to take note of all of the worn out suspension components. And we've already taken care of the rear pitman arms. So definitely check out that video if that's something that you're interested in. But in this video, we are addressing this. Now, this is the thrust arm. Uh, it is one of two control arms for the front suspension. But instead of trying to explain what this does and why it's important from up here, we're gonna go ahead and just get this car in the air, take a look at the suspension, see how the geometry works, figure out what this really does, and then we'll walk through all the steps that you need to do to replace yours. So we're at the front left corner of the car. Uh, I figured looking at it from a top-down view might be the best angle. It's hard to see everything from underneath. It's hard to see everything from up here too. Uh, but anyway, um, there's two arms on our suspension, there's this arm here, and there's this arm here. Uh, this is our thrust arm. Um, it starts at a joint back here and goes up to a ball joint right up here at the hub. And this arm, very similarly, is a joint up here and goes up to another ball joint up in here at the hub. Uh, and these are the only two suspension arms. Everything else is controlled by our strut assembly. And all these do, this arm running left to right simply controls all of the forces all the lateral forces on the car. And this arm, the thrust arm, which is at a diagonal, controls all of the forward to backward motion of our suspension. Now the suspension is simple, but it does mean that when a joint fails, uh, our control over one of those two directions of forces is no longer there in the capacity that's supposed to be. And so when this joint up in here fails or the ball joint up here fails. This can cause a shudder that you'll feel uh, around 60 to 70 miles an hour. It can also, under braking, you can feel the, the wheel actually shift and over bumps. It, it feels like the car is like walking. I actually had that problem on the front right. If you'd brake and then let off the brake, you could feel the front right wheel go thump, 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 uh, forward to backwards. So those are some of the symptoms that you can experience when this fails. So anything that you can imagine could result from slop forward to backward in the suspension is likely due to this arm here. So with all that in mind, we'll go ahead and just jump into replacing it. So these are all the tools you'll need for this job. Uh, I highly recommend using a breaker bar with a half inch drive. Uh, these bolts are gonna be stuck on. You'll also need a ball joint removal tool of some variety. This is the kind that you wedge in there and hammer in. You can also use the press ones where you tighten them up uh, until the joint pops out. This is probably gonna be more effective for this just because there's a lot more shock that you're exerting on that joint. And these joints are especially hard to get undone. You'll also need a 22 millimeter wrench. This is a 7 8 so that's the direct conversion. It's about the same size as a 22 millimeter. You'll need a half inch drive socket and a half inch drive 22 millimeter socket. And that's all you need to get this job done. So let's go ahead and jump in. So we are under the car looking at the back of our brake rotor. Uh, this is the back of the car that way. This is the front this way. And this is the nut that holds the ball joint uh, for our thrust arm here. And we're gonna go ahead and remove this nut and pop the ball joint out first before finagling anything up in there. So we'll go ahead and get our 22 millimeter wrench on here. You can also use your socket and breaker bar might be a good option, but this one seems to be willing to work with us here a little bit, so that's good. Alrighty, there we go. And now the hardest part of this whole operation is going to be popping this ball joint. We are using this ball joint tool here. We're gonna wedge that in there, and we're gonna just go ahead and Drive it on in as best as we can. There we go. And so now, uh, last thing we have to do to remove the old arm is take out this bolt here, which is held on with a bolt with the head on this side and a nut over here. So we're gonna put our wrench here and I'm gonna get under the car and attempt to turn the whole bolt with my ratchet. Go ahead and slip that on there. There we go, and our thrust arm is completely out. So for installing our new thrust arm, we're just gonna go through and do everything that we did, but in reverse. Starting with feeding all of this up into here and securing this end with this bolt. 
So there's that bolt. A washer goes between the head of the bolt and this little flange in the car. And then you got the thrust arm. Then you got this chunk of whatever. Uh, and you got another washer that goes here. And then finally, your nut threads back on the end. And then back up in here, we're just gonna get this ball joint back through the hole. Which to do that, I'm gonna turn the steering back over to the left to bring it over. There we go. Now we'll thread our nut on the bottom. So now we're gonna go ahead and snug both of these nuts up. Uh, we're not gonna torque this yet. This we torque with all of this under load and the reason for that is we don't want our bushing to get twisted. Uh, Cause if we torque it now, it'll set in the position that it's in and then this arm moves up when we put weight on it and it'll just permanently hold that bushing twisted and it will fail very prematurely. Um, so we're gonna put weight on the car before we torque this. But speaking of torques, this we're gonna torque to 94 foot pounds and under here, this ball joint, we torque to 68 foot pounds. So 94 foot pounds, 68 foot pounds. We can torque this. We can't torque this until there's weight on the car. And so just another quick tip for you. Uh, if you find that your ball joint is spinning as you're trying to turn the nut, making it so your nut isn't actually pulling everything together, uh, just turn your steering all the way to one way or the other and it'll put enough pressure on the ball joint and the whole assembly to where it'll hold the threads in place so you can thread your nut on. All right, so we're ready to go ahead and torque that to 68 foot-pounds. All righty. So now at this point, uh, in order to torque that bolt, I'm gonna go ahead and put the wheel back on and I'm gonna lower the car onto ramps just so I can still get up under there to get to that bolt. And then we'll go ahead and torque it and we'll be done. All right, so I've got the car lowered onto ramps. There's full weight on the suspension here. And I'm gonna go ahead and get our wrench on this side of the bolt, like so. And then we'll go ahead and torque this to 94 foot-pounds. All right, there we go. So that's what it takes to replace the thrust arms in a BMW E34. This should address any issues that you're having with shutter and other odd braking related issues that you might be having with movement in the suspension. Definitely something that I recommend taking care of, especially if yours are original. But uh, if you found this video helpful, feel free to check out my channel. I got a lot of other videos like this one. And while you're there, go ahead and subscribe because there'll be more in the future as well that you won't want to miss. So until then, I'll catch you in the next video.